Today, we are connected with God through the cross of Jesus Christ. God made this connection 2,000 years ago, before Facebook started, before this theory of gathering started. God already have this network in his heart, in his mind. His plan was to connect you with him and to connect one another through him. Because God gave us this sign of the cross, a vertical sign that relate us and connected with heaven and earth, God with us, God the Father, and we his adopted children, and the connection between brothers and sisters in Christ that we have in this universal church. We are all believers connected in one way or another through the cross of Jesus Christ, vertically with our relationship with our Father in heaven, and horizontally with our neighbors and brothers and sisters in Christ. God have for you a divine connection able to reach the person that you never think or imagine that you could meet. But God in his plan, who knows your needs, who knows what you have to accomplish in his will, he will deliver you that person. He will introduce you that person in front of you in ways that you will never imagine. Miraculous ways that only God can do. Because we are all connected in God's network. We are all connected in God's Facebook. So, we have this divine connection because our spirit and God's spirit are connected through our prayers. God has a network where all believers and non-believers are connected in his perfect will. Our prayers are the key, are the password to open the doors and of these connections that we have in our life and in the, with the life of other people that we know and we don't know. God can use anyone to make his will be done on your life as it is in heaven. He can use believers, Christians, brothers and sisters in Christ, and he can use no believers, no person related with Christianity who can make God's will be done in your life as it is in heaven. What kind of connection do you need this week? What kind of help do you need this will? What kind of person you need to be introduced to make God's will be done on your life as it is in heaven? Not our will, not just the, the, the wish that we have or the dreams that we have, but the will of God. As we see the scripture in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 18, the Bible said, For through him we both have access to the Father by one spirit. It's the spirit who connects us with the Father. Second, First Corinthians 6, 17 says, Be for, But he who unites himself with the Lord is one with him in the spirit. We are connected in the spirit with God. Corinthians 2, 12 says that we have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we may understand what God has freely given us. He gave us this opportunity to be part of his family. He gave us the opportunity to be brothers and sisters in Christ with other believers. Jude 1, 20 says, but you, dear friends, build yourself up your most holy faith and pray in the Holy Spirit. When we pray, we are connected. When we pray, we access God's favor. We access God's network. We access God's social and Christian community. Ephesians 6, 18 says, And pray in the Spirit, in all occasions, with all kind of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. Keep on praying. Keep on praying because prayer is the key to open the doors of God's connection in your life and in the heavenly realms. We have to obey this divine connection because this connection will give us also directions. If you don't know what to do, just let the net, the current of the net war of God send you to the place where you need to, to go, lead you to the person that you need to meet. God is already going ahead of you, preparing the way for, the way for you. It's chapter 10 as we read today. In verse 7 and 8 say, When the angel who spoke to him had gone, Cornelius called two of his servants and the vote soldiers who was in his attendant. He told them everything that had happened and sent them to Joppa. As we just read the story here of Cornelius, he was praying in Caesarea. He was a Roman centurion. He was a soldier, a captain in charge of 100 soldiers. That's what a centurion is. And he was uh, recruited in the army of Rome, the Roman Empire. And he connected with another soldier. But this was not a Roman soldier. He was the soldier of the kingdom and the empire of God, the kingdom of heaven. And this soldier was Peter, a soldier of Christ. 
This week, this Saturday, we're going to have here in CEN uh, our summer retreat. And our summer retreat thing is Army of God. The Army of God. Because we want to make our kids in CEN to become soldiers of Christ, as you see the decoration today in our room. We want to make these soldiers to be disciples of Christ who can fight the good fight of faith, and with this faith, they will overcome the world. We need more soldiers of Christ. We need to connect with more Christians who wants to do the will of God in their life, who wants to make more disciples, who want to teach the next generation to become soldiers of Christ, disciples of Jesus, followers, and global leaders that will impact the war in their generations. We need connections today. As we study this chapter 10 of the book of Acts, then we see that these two soldiers, they have two different visions. But this vision were all connected. They were obedient to the vision. In verse 11 and, and to 16, the Bible said that he saw heaven open of something like a large sheet being let down to heirs by his four corners. I'm talking about Peter. And it contains all kinds of four-footed animals, as well as reptiles of the heirs and bears of the air. Then the voice told him, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. Surely not, Lord, Peter replied. I have never eaten anything impure or unclean. The voice spoke to him a second time. Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. This happened three times, and immediately the sheet was taken back to heaven. Cornelius in Caesarea had a vision. He saw an angel in his vision. And in this vision, the, the angel spoke to Cornelius and said, Go and send someone to Joppa to bring Peter here because he has a message for you to tell you. He has something for you that God wants to give you because God has remembered your prayers, has remembered your fasting, has remembered your offerings, has remembered your war that you wore. As we say here in CN the last year, your war has never been in vain. Your war has never been in vain. And I, I believe that our war here in CN will never going to be in vain. But we are now to become more than conquerors and go to achieve and conquer more and more territory for the glory of God in this time that we are standing the kingdom of God here in earth. But we need more soldiers. We need more people who, are, who have this vision and send for more people who have the same vision and help us to make God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Peter, in the other side of the, this country, in the city of Joppa, he had another vision in a different time. Cornelius was praying at the three in the afternoon in Caesarea. Peter was praying at noon in Joppa. These two men were two people of prayer. Two soldiers who know how to obey God and who knows their responsibility. And the first responsibility is to report to the superior, to report, to talk to God. But not because he is a general, because he's a commander in chief, but because he is our friend. God wants to listen our prayers all the time and he wants to please and supply for all our needs. And he wants to use us as instrument of his will to be done here on earth. When Cornelio was praying, it was the three o'clock in the afternoon. It was the time when the Jews were praying in the synagogue, in the temple. It was a time when they presented the offerings and the incense with the requests to the altar of the Lord. Actually, it was the same time when Jesus was crucified in, on Calvary. It was at the three in the club when they presented the sacrifice of the holocaust for the sin of the people of Israel. Now, we are talking about a Jew, not a Jew, but a Gentile, a Roman centurion, a soldier who was not educated in the Judaism. But he knows, he knew how to pray to the God who is the only one among the dead God in this war in his time. He knew that there were one living God. And he was praying to that God. He was fasting to the, for, for, in his praying to this God. And he was helping the people of God. So he learned how to help the people of Israel. But he was not a member of the synagogue. He was not a Jew. He didn't become a proselyte. But he sympathized with the faith of the Jews. And he imitated their faith by keeping the same time of prayer. Peter also, when he went to pray to the temple of the beautiful, it was at 3 o'clock when he made a miracle and made one person to walk with God the rest of his life. But Peter, at this time, was at noon and he was hungry. The meal was not ready. Probably the cook couldn't prepare the fish at time. So Peter, fortunately, he had to fast. And he went to the roof as he was fasting for lunch, praying for more direction and praying for God's will be done in his life. Now, the Bible doesn't say what kind of prayer these two men of God, these two people did. The Bible doesn't tell us what was the prayer of Cornelio, nor say the prayer of Peter. They just were praying at the time that they were appointed with God. 
I imagine that Cornelius was asking God, have mercy on us that we don't have the opportunity to listen to the gospel like the Jews have. We have heard about this Jesus. Because remember, when Jesus was on earth, there were another centurion who asked to Jesus to heal his servant, who was also generous and helping the community of the Jews there in Jerusalem. And probably from this centurion to another centurion, this message of Jesus of Nazareth was spread around the, the peloton and, and probably this news reached to Italy because Cornelius came from the peloton of Italy. He was from Italy probably. And this news about the gospel came to Italy. It went, Cornelius was sending to Caesarea because Caesarea was the city where Pontius Pilate was living and all the uh, government members and the members of, of, of this empire was uh, while well, they were near to Jerusalem, they have to live not in Jerusalem, but they live in Caesarea. I actually have the opportunity to visit Caesarea uh, a few years ago. And it was a magnificent uh, place. They, were, they have a, a small coliseum there too. They have a platform, they have performance. And actually, they, when I went there, they were a, a performance and they were a, a kind of opera there. It was an amazing place. And I could feel that how people feel in that time when they were in Caesarea. It was, a, a, it was like Seoul probably here in Korea. And when you go to Seoul, you, you can go to the theaters, you can go to the stadium, you can go to the place where people and sophisticated people and, and, and elegant people always attend to the place. That's why the place where the government of uh, Caesarea and Jude Judea was there, Pontius Pilate. And here, this Italian centurion wanted to meet the disciples of Jesus in one way. In the other side of the city, in Joppa, near by the sea, Peter he never prayed this prayer, but he said, God, use me to do your will in this world. As you command me, let me go to the end of the earth to be a witness, to preach the gospel to every creature as you command. I'm here to obey your will. Use me, God, as you used me before in Samaria. Because remember, Peter went to Samaria and he also evangelized the Samarian. The commandment of Jesus said, wait until you receive the Holy Spirit and you will be my witness in Jerusalem, in Judea, and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. So Peter, he said, okay, God. I testified in Jerusalem. Yeah, I preached in Jerusalem. 3,000 people came and were converted. The second preach, 5,000 people came and they were converted. And then uh, by the invitation of, of Philip, I went to Samaria. And I also make an evangelist campaign. And many Samarian, Samaritans, they believe in God and they receive the Holy Spirit. So what is my next step? I'm going to the end of the world. God sent me. And God just say, okay, as you wish. You were praying to send you to the end of the world. I will send you to the end of the world. But you don't need to go to the end of the world. The end of the world will come to you. What was the end of the world? The beginning of the world for Jews was Jerusalem. The end of the world for the, for the Jews was Europa. Because they didn't know the new continent yet. Europa was, Europe, sorry. Europe was the end of the world for them. For people who are in Asia, the other side is Europe. For people who are in Europe, the other side is Asia. So for the people who were in Asia, the end of the war, war was Europe. And Peter was probably thinking to go to the end of the world to testify about Jesus. And Jesus said, or the Holy Spirit said, don't worry. I bring the end of the war here to you. And from Italy, from Europe, came the centurion to ask for Peter's message. So that was this two vision, two connected people in this network of God that they never, they never imagined how this going to be made it or how they will be war, but they just pray that God will be done in their life. I ask you and beg you, start to pray for God's connection. Start to pray for God, uh, reveal to you his network. That he knows the people that you need for your job, for your life. But not only for that, but for you to become a servant, to preach and to be a witness to the Lord to the end of the earth. These two people have dedicated to pray. These two persons, one Jew, one a Gentile, they were soldiers in their own regiment. And these two have a vision. They were connected by God. And these two know how to meditate on God's word, meditate while they were praying. And fasting. Now in verse 17 to 20, the Bible said that while Peter was wondering about the meaning of this vision, men sent by Corinthians found out where Simon's house was and stopped it at the game. Now, you have to understand what kind of person is Peter. Peter is not an easy guy. He's not an easy student. He's not an easy deacon or elder in church. He's not an easy teacher in Sunday school. You have to tell him since once again and again and again until they get it. Peter is the person who likes to play 369, 369. That we say here in Korea, Samjuku, Samjuku. Because Peter, three times he denied Jesus. 
Do you know? Are you from Galilee? Are you followers of Jesus? Peter saying, no, I don't know that man. No, I'm not the person that you think I am. I never know this man and even he cars in front of Jesus. Three times he denied Jesus before three times the rooster cried. When Jesus died and later, three days later, three days later, resurrected from the dead, he went probably after three weeks to meet, Jesus, to meet Peter. The first week he presented to the disciples and to Peter. The second week he presented to others in Damascus. The third week he found Peter and the others just fishing again. And God had to meet him again and say, Peter, even though you saw me resurrected, even though you saw me eating with you, having a good time with you, you still have no confidence of the plans that I have for you. So let me ask you this question, Peter. Do you love me? And Peter said, yes, Lord, I love you. No, Peter, you don't understand me. Do you love me? Yes, Lord, I love you with all my heart. No, Peter, you still don't get it. I ask you for the third time, do you love me? And Peter said, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Three times Peter denied Jesus. And three times Jesus asked for Peter if he really loved him. Now, God, the Holy Spirit, showing to Peter one vision. From heaven, a cloth came down with all kinds of animals. And the voice of heaven said, Peter, get out, kill, and eat. And Peter said to God, God, I never eat sangyosal. How can I going to do this? For the Jews to eat this kind of food, it was abomination. It was against God's law. And Peter wanted to be probably obedient to God's law. But God wanted to tell Peter, you are not under the law anymore. You are under the grace now. And everything that I created is good for food. So don't tell that you cannot eat that. So he showed to Peter the second time the same vision. But Peter didn't get it. He started, okay, Lord, let me go to a Bible study. Okay, the Bible said in Deuteronomy, no, do not tend the Lord. Oh, the Bible said, do not eat this kind. Of... And Peter was trying to, to, to think about what this vision means. And God said, Peter, you still don't get it. So one more time, three times, God showed to Peter the same vision. And now finally, Peter got it. How? When the soldiers and the friends of Cornelius knocked the door of Simon the Tanner in Joppa. Ah! So there were no animals. No, Peter, it's not about animals. It's about people. So you don't want me to eat samgyosar? No, it's not about samgyosar. Maybe kimchi, but, but not samgyosar. Go to these people. Go with these people. Don't be afraid. Now Peter understands that this food, it was no a physical food. It was a spiritual food. When Jesus was in error, he went from Jerusalem to the way to Jericho and he passed through Samaria. Not a Jewish community, a foreigner community, forbidden for Jews. Jews didn't relate with Samaritan people. They were enemies. They considered the Samaritans like Wegeim or Wegogin. And when Jesus was there, he was hungry. And he said to his disciples, okay, what we have for lunch? The disciples say, well, Lord, you know, we have nothing. We always receive from people help. Okay? Go and find some food. Okay? Judas, how much money we have? Well, according to the last offering, we have enough. We can go and, and have a good lunch. Okay? Go and use the budget that we have and bring lunch. But he probably think two or three disciples will be enough to buy just a few bags of shopping, right? Go to just Home Plus and Imar and just bring just two people this, you know, but 12 of them, the 12 went to shop to go to the market. Why they need bodyguards or something? So they say, well, we have money. Let's, let's have some snack for the, way, for the way. And they left Jesus alone at the well of Samaria, at the well of Jacob. And then at noon, when he was hungry and thirsty, this Samaritan woman came. And he, she tried to draw water from the well of Jacob. And as she was drawing water from the well of Jacob, Jesus said, <clears throat> Excuse me, Agashi, man, can I have some water? And this Samaritan woman looked at him very rarely and said, Are you talking to me? Are you talking to me? You know, when in America the black people, they, they were addressed, you go to Brooklyn and say, hey, Are you talking to me? No. And this black woman, like Oprah, are you talking to me? Hey, I'm black. You are white. Right? Don't talk to me in that way. 
So this Samaritan woman was talking to you. Are you talking to me? I'm Samaritan. You are Jew. We don't talk to each other. We don't say hello to each other. And you are asking me for water? And Jesus replied, if you know who is asking you for water, you will ask him for water and he will give you the living water. Then this woman who was a Samaritan, she was a descendant of Israel. So she knew about the story that the Messiah will come and he will bring the living waters according to the prophets. And she tried to make a, some kind of survey with Jesus. Well, our fathers, they always drawn water from here. This is the, the well of Jacob, our ancestor. And we know that you, you people, you go and worship in Jerusalem. We worship here in Samaria. But Jesus said, this time, nor in Jerusalem, nor in Samaria, you will worship the fathers. Because the fathers are looking, as we always say every Sunday here in CEN, worshipers who will worship God and in spirit and in truth. And here in CEN, in English. So, at that time, this woman realized that Jesus was not an ordinary man. And she asked, Sir, are you a prophet? And Jesus asked to this woman, Okay, show me your network. Lord, I have no network. Who you are related to? I have nobody. Okay, Jesus said. You say the truth. Because you have five connections before. Five husbands, the Bible said. And my Bible says five connections. And these five connections are not working for you. They are useless. And the connection that this one that you have right now, because she had five husbands before, and now she has another pretender, a fiancé probably, and he said, he's not your husband too. And this woman said, oh, how do you know about my network? Do you have my passport? Do somebody hacking my network? How do you know about my projects? And she realized she was talking to Jesus, to God. And she immediately bowed to Jesus say, Lord, give me from this water. Give me from this connection that you have. Put me into your network. And after Jesus blessed her, she went to the city and she said, hey, I have a new network. I have new connections. Now, this woman, she was disconnected with all people in Samaria. She was considered as a prostitute. Five husband. This Samaritan woman, she knew that she was considered as a sinner. She was considered as a person who cannot be connected with anybody. Everybody rejects. She presents her network. No, we don't accept you in our community. You cannot enter in our Facebook. You are not worthy to be part of our social network. And she was alone. That's why she went to, at noon. When nobody went to draw water, she was alone there looking for water. But Jesus knew her problem. No physical water, but the spiritual water. Jesus knew that she needed connection. One connection to relate to her Father in heaven and one connection to relate to all the brothers and sisters in Christ. When she received the gospel, she went back to Samaria and now she said, I have a connection. I'm connected with God. God is connected with me. Come and I will take you and introduce this one who is connecting to all of us, to the creator of the world. And many people came to Jesus, listened to the word of Jesus and say, yes, you are right. Now we don't believe because of your connection or we because now because we are directly connected with Jesus Christ. And the whole city believe in the Lord. That's what you are. You need that grace today. Probably you were disconnected with Jesus today. But today, if you are thirsty and hungry for Jesus, he will connect it to you. So when the disciple of Jesus came back with all this Imar and home plus back and said, okay, God, we are ready for a buffet. Jesus said, I'm not hungry. I'm not hungry. And probably these disciples, are, they went back to Jesus. He, they meet with this crazy woman at noon. Nobody were there. And she was just telling, I have a connection, I have a connection, I have a connection with God. And everybody saw this crazy woman that looks like a prostitute. Who's going to take care of what she said? They thought, did somebody brought something to eat to Jesus? Did somebody bring something to eat to the Lord while we were shopping in the city? And Jesus replied, no. My foot is not physical. My foot is to do God's will. My foot is to do God's will. So now, Peter, three times I showed you this vision, and you don't understand. It's not about connecting to your job, to your people, to your friends, wherever you want to be successful. It's about to do my will, Peter. Do you get it? It's about my will. Go down. Don't be afraid. Go down and meet these people because I send them. So you do my will and know your will. And Peter went down. After three times, he finally get it. 
And then he went to Caesarea and he met Cornelius, who was waiting for them. We are connected with Christ. As Jesus connected Peter and Cornelius, two soldiers, one centurion, one a disciple of Christ, the two devoted prayer people, the two received this vision, the two were obedient to the vision, the two were filled with the Holy Spirit, and the two shared the gospel to their friends. We are connected with Christ, not just to be successful in this world, but to connect more people to Jesus. We are eternally connected. The Bible says in Romans chapter 15, eight, chapter 8, verse 15 and 16, For you did not receive the spirit that made you a slave against the fear, but you have received the spirit of sonship, and by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are connected with God, our Father, because we are God's children. We need to have this connection and this net, divine network, closer and closer, more tighter and tighter to each other. Jesus said, I tell you the truth, whatever you bind on earth, whatever you connect on earth, whatever, whatever network you make in earth will be bound in heaven, we will connect in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth, we will lose in heaven. Again, I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything you ask for, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three come together in my name, there I am with them. I am connected with them. I open my network, my network for them. So do you need help? Do you need div divine connection? Do you need to be connected with God network? Is it time to pray? Probably fast. Probably meditate more on God's promises. The Holy Spirit will help you. Romans 8, 26, 27 saying, In the same way the Spirit helped us in our weakness, we don't know what we ought to pray for. But the Spirit himself intercedes for, intercedes for us with groans and words cannot express. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for the saints in accordance with God's will. In accordance with God's will. We are more than conquerors for what God has connected in our life. Do you believe that? Do you believe that you are connected to God through your prayers? And you are connected to through each other through your prayers? You don't know what kind of people God is preparing for you tomorrow. You could be a believer, yes. Hallelujah. You could be a non-believer. God can use that too. God can use anyone to make His will be done in your life as it is in heaven. Don't call unworthy. Don't call unclean. Don't call common anything that God brought into your life, into your business, into your, la into your neighborhood, into your studies, into your family. Because God wants to use you to deliver a message, to deliver a connection to those who are now or never connected with God. We have a huge network. We have a huge platform to work with. But God wants to make this network more, more, more bigger. Bigger than Facebook, bigger than anything in this world. God has a plan for you. God has a plan for me. And as we connect to each other in this plan, God will use just mighty. And we, all together, will become more than conquerors. Conquering more, more networks for the glory of God. In Jesus' name. Let's pray.